Last Sunday, I was teaching in a message titled, Prayer That Works. We want to continue from where we stopped last Sunday. Last Sunday, we were teaching a message titled, Prayer That Works. And I told you, when you talk about prayer, it is not a must that when you pray, you must get answer. It is not a must. What makes you to get answer when you pray is when you follow the proper requirements for prayers. Somebody can pray for 24 hours, no single result. Another person can pray for 30 minutes and the prayer have made impact. So it is not the long time spent in prayer that brings about results. It is the principle or the lay down principles for prayers that you follow that brings about result. So we want to continue from where we stopped last Sunday. What is prayer? I'll just give you one or two definitions. Then we read from Matthew chapter 6. Prayer is a spiritual relationship that stands as channel of communication between divinity and humanity. Prayer is a spiritual relationship that stands as channel of communication between divinity and humanity. Now, when you talk about divinity, divinity is God. Humanity, we talk about man. So when man wants to have a relationship with God, you can only do that by prayer. Every time we have things that are bothering us and we feel like talking to our father in heaven, the only way you can talk to your father in heaven is by what? Is by prayer. Praise the Lord. So prayer is a spiritual relationship between man and God. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Can I hear somebody shout a better hallelujah? hallelujah. If you are blessed, somebody shout I'm blessed. blessed. Amen. As a Christian, prayer should be part of your lifestyle. But what we are treating today is prayer that works. Matthew chapter 6. Let's look at verse 9. There is a way to pray and you get answer. There is a proper way to pray for you to get answer. Let's take our text from Matthew 6 from verse 9. You know I told you last week that there was a time the disciples, they were praying but they were not getting results. And when they went to Jesus, they said to him, Master, teach us how to pray. Now one thing you should ask yourself, as disciples, the Bible called them disciples, does it mean they don't know how to pray? How come disciples gather themselves and went to Jesus and say, Jesus, teach us how to pray? As disciples, I believe that prayer is part of their lifestyle. But the reason why they went to Jesus and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. It's not as if they don't know how to pray. They've been praying, but probably they're not getting the kind of results they needed. So they wanted to really know if there is something they're not getting right. So when they went to him, look at what he said. Verse 9. Are you there? He said, after this man are therefore, pray ye. Are you there? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Next verse. Are you there? I say, are you there? He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Don't forget the first one. He said, hallowed be thy name. Underline that word, hallowed be thy name. That is thanksgiving. So there are certain things you are meant to do when you pray. Let me pick out the first one. Thanksgiving. It's our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thanksgiving. There are a lot of people who know how to make a lot of prayers, but there is no thanksgiving in that prayer. There is a right way to pray for you to get impact, for you to get results. Don't you know that even if you go to meet somebody, maybe a friend, a colleague, in your office or somebody very close to you don't you know that when you go and meet somebody who knows you and the person did something good for you the way you show appreciation to that person we give the person strength to do more tomorrow i don't know whether i'm talking here are you really following what i'm saying here the way you behave the heart of gratitude we make the person that tomorrow the person can do the one that is more than what he or she have done before so he now said to the disciples, if you want to pray, pray ye after this manner. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. You know, like I said last week, a lot of Christians, what they fail to understand is that when they come across the lost prayer in Matthew chapter 6, 
A lot of them think that the lost prayer is all about reciting it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come. And when they are done, they just do the sign of the cross and lie on the bed. You've not prayed. What you did, you only recited a portion of the Bible. It's not prayer. Jesus gave them this portion of the Bible because he wanted them to pick the necessary requirement, the necessary points, so that in their daily prayer life, if only they can reflect it there, prayer will avail. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. It means every time you pray, don't forget the prayer of thanksgiving. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He taught his disciples. What it means is that every time you go on your knees to pray, you should say, Father, I appreciate you. It's not for you to recite it. It's only giving you the clue and the point. What it means is every time you kneel down, you say, Father, I thank you. Father, I glorify your name. Thank you for the accident you saved me from yesterday. Thank you for making me to see a new day. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are praying and you are not praying this way, you are praying a wrong prayer. I slept and I woke up. Father, I thank you. Who am I? There are many in the mortuary. There are many in the grave. There are many. Their body is not complete. There are some on wheelchair. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Father, I thank you. I am healthy. There are some that every week they are in the hospital. But from year to year, you kept me alive without any problem. Father, thank you. Am I communicating? So, thanksgiving should not be something you neglect. The Igbo say, When you appreciate and thank God for the good things he has done in your life. Forget about that problem that you want to pray about. Everybody should understand this today. Anything that is your problem, before you pray, God is already aware. Are you there? In fact, there are sometimes there are some prayers you want to pray. Even before you pray, God has given you answer. He makes you understand that he's aware of everything you are going to. But pray the right way. He said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So appreciate him, thank him. That you went out and came back successfully. Who told you it's by your strength? It's not by your strength. Are you really getting what I'm saying here? Some people passed through the same road. They did not come back alive. Am I communicating? Some people think it's by their strength. It's not by their strength. If you feel it's by your strength, then there is just one sickness. Just one ailment. One sickness that will come to you. You will know that there are some human beings that when sickness comes, they become vegetable. The same person who is strong enough to hustle, struggle, when you see him or her on sick bed, he can't even help himself. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here. That's the reason why you should always thank and appreciate him. It is not by your strength. It is not by your power. So each time you pray, prayer of thanksgiving should be the number one on your list. As you are thanking him, he's aware. He already knows your challenge and your problem before you enter into prayer. Every form of prayer, desire, anything you have in heart, you are praying for God to do for you. God is already aware. He is aware. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. So sometimes some people think it's by praying for 35 hours, 40 hours. I've seen people that when they want to pray, the moment they go on their knee, they begin to cry. As they start crying, the next thing you hear, Father, 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 where are you? I want you to appear now. Is he a command? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, so we say, Father, I will not let you go until something happened today. Wrong prayer. He already knows what you are praying for. Thank him. Appreciate him. Show honor. That's what they call gratitude. Let God see the heart where the prayer is coming from. Let him understand that the things he has done, you show appreciation. Am I communicating? Do you know that when you pray without prayer of thanksgiving, God sees you as a proud person. You are presenting yourself as if everything that has happened in your life is by your strength and by your power. Am I talking? If you are here, somebody say I'm here. Look at King Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible. All the blessings God gave to him. Because just one day, he said, all these things I've gotten in this kingdom is by my power. After my own might and after my own majesty. Are you there? He did not recognize God as the doer. Let me tell you, even if you have strength to walk, it is God that gave you the strength. You don't understand what I'm saying here. Am I talking? 
You went to school and you are intelligent and you are among the best in your school. Don't raise your shoulder. Return the glory to God. God is the one that gave you that wisdom. Am I talking here? If you hear me, somebody say here. God blessed you and gave you children. Blessed you and maybe there is a woman close to your compound who is barren for so many years and you are using it in the right way to insult the woman. I have seen people that their children died the same day. At once. Maybe you must have had that before. So don't glory about anything. Anything can happen at any time. That is why you must always give God praise. When you thank him, you invoke the power of divine protection over your life. Am I talking to somebody? So let's move on. Verse 10. He said, thy kingdom come that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Next verse. We are looking at the Lord's prayer today. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. This is where we have problem. Give us this day our daily bread. Do you know the prayer point? Father, as I go out today, I don't want to come back empty handed. Wrong prayer. Are you really getting what I'm saying here? Give us this day our daily bread. You know what it means? As a contractor, that is that prayer you are praying. Lord, as I go out today, I want to come back with contract. We know. He already knows you are going to ask for your daily bread. Anything that you do that favors you, that puts food on your table, that is what is giving your daily bread. You have a restaurant. People come there to eat. You have a boutique. You have a factory where they manufacture something. You have an office. You are a CEO. Am I talking to somebody? Those places that income and money come from, that is what we always pray to receive the blessings of God. It's a good prayer, but let it not be your number one prayer point. Am I talking here? When it becomes your number one prayer point when you want to pray, then you'll be having a lot of errors in your prayer. That's the reason why you pray and there's no result. Praise God. I say praise God. Give us this day our daily bread. Look at the wrong prayer. The wrong prayer is some of us when we kneel down. The next we begin to pray, Father, Father, as I go out today, any devil that will not allow me to succeed. Mm -mm. That is not the first prayer. Thank him first. When you thank him, you have watered the ground. Am I, am I talking to somebody here? This is the reason why we are not having answers. As a matter of fact, you want to pray to God. If you know how to sing, sing. If you know how to praise, praise. If you can lie on the floor, prostrate, lie on the floor. Worship him, being the spirit for a very long time. You, you'll be surprised that at some point, you have gone to a realm where you have even forgotten your prayer point. And yet, when you go out, you receive answer. You know why? Because you've already appreciated him. Angels are already around. Don't you understand? The Bible says he dwells in the praise of his people. Anytime you thank and appreciate God, God does not send somebody to represent him. He comes down by himself. You know why? He can't share his glory with any man. That's what you should understand. Am I talking? When you are asking for your daily bread, God might not come. He might send an angel to minister to you. But when you thank him, praise him and appreciate him, he doesn't send anybody. He's there. He dwells in the praise of his people. Every time you are thanking him, God is present. Because he is the one that will take the glory by himself. You can't share his glory with any man. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying here. Next verse. Praise God. I say praise God. This is another place we have issue in our prayer. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Some versions say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. Are you there? Do you know what it means? Any prayer you pray and the prayer of forgiveness is not there. That prayer is not complete. Forgive. Look at the word forgiveness. Now, understand that forgiveness is reciprocal. People offend you People do a lot of things against you. Learn to open up your heart and forgive them. In this area of forgiveness, that's why a lot of people have problems. There are certain things people will do to you. For you to forgive them, it becomes so difficult. Am I talking here? Have you come across something like that? Because you felt so disappointed that such a thing is coming from such a person you trust with your heart, you trust with your life. I will teach you something about forgiveness. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's what some verses say. Forgive us. You're telling God, God, forgive me. Don't forget. And you are equally saying, 
I have forgiven the people that offended me. That is to say, when you have forgiven those who trespass against you, that's the only way you can now receive forgiveness from your Father in heaven. I don't know if you get the point clear. You can't be asking God for forgiveness when you are holding somebody in your heart. It won't work. So, it is reciprocal. So, when you are now saying, Father, I am praying for forgiveness. Have mercy on me. You see, what people fail to understand is that when you want to assess the throne of grace, you need to be pure. Hello. Are you getting what I'm saying here? You want to assess the throne of grace. There's something you are praying for. There's something you are asking for. Forgive the people who have offended you. Two women were having issues some years back and I think I've shared the story here. While I was trying to settle their differences, I spoke to the first woman. I said, please, try and settle with this woman. Let peace reign. Amen. You know what she said to me? He said, prophet. I said, yes. You are a prophet. I said, yes. He said, help me tell God. If it is because of this woman, I will go to her fire. I am already there. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Are you understand what I'm saying? He said, prophet, help me tell God. Tell God, I said, if it is because of this woman that will make me to go to hellfire, tell God they have already registered my name there. I am ready to enter the fire because of this woman. I can never forgive her. She went for that to tell me, if you ever call me because of this woman's issue, I will not come to this church again. Praise the Lord. Then I looked at the second woman. I said, what do you think about this issue? She said, well, prophet, for me, my heart is pure. I am ready to settle with her. I don't have any problem. If she says she wants to go to hellfire, she can go alone. For me, <laughs> I'm not ready. Prophet, anything you ask me to do, I will do. Now, look at the difference between the two of them. The one who has vowed that she can never forgive, she has already created a hindrance to all her prayers. I repeat, to all her prayers. That's why she'll be hustling, struggling, praying, shouting, going to mountain. Prayer is not answered by the mountain you climb. You know, I've told you this sometime last Sunday. Prayer cannot be answered by you going to mountain. You can even pray in your bedroom. God will answer you. Yes, Let me tell you what I said last Sunday. And I can repeat it anywhere. The reason why people choose to go to a mountain to pray is not because God is on the mountain. If any pastor tells you that God is on the mountain, the pastor is a liar. They call him omnipresent God. Omnipresent God means a God that has the ability and capacity to present himself anywhere, any hour, any time, any minute, and any day. So God can be in your bedroom. God can be with you inside your car. God can be with you on your bed. God can be with you in your kitchen. It depends on where you want him to come and relate with you. Am I talking with you here? If you are hearing me, somebody say here. So the reason people go to mountain is not because God is on the mountain. It is because there are certain people who believe because of the nature of their job, the kind of work they do. They are hustle for the day. They feel that if they want to stay at home to do that prayer, distraction will not allow them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Here. That's it. Distraction will not allow them. So they need a place they can have a quiet time with God alone. So when they now go to the mountain and they feel at this point, I want to switch off my phone. No communication. No interaction. And if I pray, I know God will answer. Then on that mountain, if they cry to God and talk to God, God will visit them on the mountain. Not because God is living on the mountain. Yes, sir. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Forgiveness. It is the things that is a requirement for the prayer I'm teaching you now. Forgiveness. You now say, I will never forgive. You have created a hindrance to your prayer. Learn to forgive the people that have offended you. Praise the Lord. Stop bearing grudges against anyone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? 
the place your mind is going to, I will still come back there. That is where I will stop for today. The message continues next Sunday. It's a one month teaching. Yeah. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. Now, what do you do? Forgive them. You know why? Let it not be that it's a human being like you that want to stand as a barrier. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes, to your prayer. Now, what do you do? There are certain people that when they do some certain things in your life, forgive them. But the position and the place you kept them in your life, remove them from there. I know what you are thinking. There are some people that people have hurt you to a level whereby you feel so disappointed. You don't even know who to trust again. Am I talking to somebody here? Forgive them. The reason for the forgiveness is let it not be one woman being somewhere that will create a barrier between you and your father in heaven. Because you know this race we are running is a personal race. Let nobody stand as a barrier to your prayer. Look at what you do. The place and the position you kept them in your life, remove them from there. The Bible taught us to forgive. But the Bible did not tell you to trust the person and trust the person again. Did you hear what I said? The Bible told you to do what? To forgive. But the Bible did not tell you to trust the person, trust the person and trust the person again. Okay, let me give you an instance. A woman some time ago, somebody wanted to poison her food. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pay attention, there's something you will learn. Anybody that is looking for your life and the person tells you, this is where this message is critical now. Pay attention. Anybody that is looking for your life and as the person is looking for your life, if not for God, the person would have killed you. But by the mercy of God, God revealed and you escaped the death. Then you now met the person. I thought I trust you so you can do something that will kill me. Pay attention. The person now tell you, I am very sorry. It is the work of the devil. People are fast enough to blame devil for their problem. It is not devil. Let me tell you, some people are naturally wicked. Some people are naturally evil. Listen, there are some people that no, no matter what you do for them in life, they are bad, they are bad. There are people you can sacrifice your life for. Are you hearing me? But if you still go behind you and hear the things they are saying about you, tears will drop from your eye. You see, these are the reasons why a lot of people find it difficult to forgive. Let me teach you something. Forgive the person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? After forgiving the person, don't trust the person again. Stay away from that person. Even if you are going to be close with the person, your relationship and closeness with that person should be from a far distance. The woman's story I was telling you, I want to tell you the story so that you learn. A friend, she's a friend to the other woman. He wants to poison the woman so that the woman will eat and die. And God so kind, something happened. And God did not allow it to work the way they planned it. At the end of the day, it was discovered that there was poison in the food. He met the friend. He said, my friend, why did you want to kill me? Okay, if you know you did not put something in this food, eat this food. And she said, please, I'm very sorry. He started crying. It is the handwork of the devil. I have seen people who can cry that more than those in Nollywood. You know, those who act drama, and they know how to cry. You know why? It is their profession. When they have been giving them a role to act, they have no option than to act according to what is written in the script. I have seen people who are not even into Nollywood. If they start crying here, you will even cry more than them. Crying does not tell what is in the heart of people. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Are you learning something today? Pay attention. The next thing you should do from your heart, forgive him, but anything concerning your food, cut off. That you refuse to eat with that person in the same plate does not mean you hate him. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Here. This is where we make mistakes. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying here? Now, at the end of the day, he said, uh, we are still close. We are still close by. Please forgive me. I swear to Almighty God, I will not do it again. That kind of thing will not happen again. Lies. When they became so close, and I warned that woman, 
I said to her, Madam, you see that your friend? He said, eh. I said, please, give her a distance. Did you hear me? Yes, you know, the problem people have, I don't know whether they understand when God is talking. When God wants to talk, God doesn't fall from heaven. Yes, he speaks through people. Yes, Am I talking here? Yes, if you are here, somebody say I'm here. The woman said to me, eh, Prophet, what is there is that I'm forgiving her. And my, my, my pastor in my church told me that since I'm forgiving her, we can come back to normal the way we were before. You see? And I said to her, that is your pastor. I am not a pastor. I am a prophet. Am I talking to somebody? The difference between a pastor and a prophet Pastors like to say things that is sweet. They like peace. Prophet, we love violence. It's not the same thing. The difference between a pastor and a prophet. You can meet a pastor now and you tell him what the girl you want to marry is doing. The next thing the pastor will tell you, don't worry, come. I will cancel you. We will do like this. If you just meet a prophet, he will just scan from now to 10 years. If it's, if it's scan and come back, it will tell you, throw her away. Yes. It might be bitter in your ear. Yes. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yes. That's the difference between a pastor and a prophet. Yes, we don't talk based on what you are telling us. We look beyond what you are saying. Yes, so when I said to her, stay away from your friend, he said, ah. I said, okay, no problem. Do you know what happened? Pay attention. After one year, that her friend finally gave her poison. When she ate the poison, at the point of death, she was calling my number. I was not with my phone. As at the point when I saw the call, to return the call back, it was the daughter that picked the call, that the mother is dead. Yes, that is how they buried her. Human beings are the worst set of... In fact, some human beings, they are worse than animals. Why am I teaching you forgiveness and I decide to go in this direction? It's for you not to be stupid when you forgive. Yes. Okay. I was hearing Apostle Johnson Suleiman preaching one day. He said, forgiveness is no memory loss. Have you heard him say something like that? He said, forgiveness is not what? That is to say, People have done things to you. Even if you forgive them, it does not format the memory of the trauma and the things they have made you gone through. Anybody who tells you it is the devil, not the devil, it was devil. That same devil that used him or her, if you see, take the person back the way you took him or her before, that same devil will still come again, again and again. Rise to your feet.